But Databricks, thanks for checking out this quick tour of Azure Databricks. This is a portion of a Wintelect webinar I did a couple of months ago, and it goes into more details on getting started with Azure Databricks, such as what Databricks is and the benefits of running it on Azure. This part is from a demo in the webinar that goes over how to get an Azure Databricks instance running and goes over the basics of the Databricks UI. And then it goes into some of the cool things you can do in a Databricks notebook. And if you want to view the entire webinar, the link will be in the description. Hope you're creating a cluster. And then I'll go through a notebook where we take the data that we will load into it and do you know, a couple of uh, analysis on it. So I'm going to go to my Azure portal here. If it lets me log on, of course. There we go. So to create an instance here, we'll go to create a resource. And you can, you can search for Azure Databricks up here, but you can also go to Analytics and Azure Databricks. The main thing you have to do is just create a workspace name. So Give it kind of a unique name here and a, a resource group and a pricing tier. And oh, it looks like they added a trial actually. So that's good. So if you want to play with it, go ahead and use the trial. Uh, but you also have, you have the standard and premium. And the big difference here between the, these two is that premium will allow you to have these role based access controls, while standard just uses the main uh, sign on. Uh, Azure AD security for it. So you set that and you, you would just click create. And that does take a few minutes to do it. And, you know, like a cooking show, I already have an instance in the oven. And uh, once you have it, you have this uh, overview pane here. And there's not too much you can do within Azure and Azure Databricks. And so you just click launch workspace. If you, you can see here, uh, there we go. And you see here that it's using that Azure Active Directory sign on. And here is kind of the basic interface within Databricks. So the first thing, like I mentioned, the cluster is the heart of Databricks. So we need to create a cluster to actually do anything. So go to the clusters and go up to create cluster. And this is where that one click setup comes into place. All I need to do is give it a cluster name and I can just click create cluster. And that's the least amount of work I have to do. You can do, you have a few options here. Uh, you tell what kind of Databricks runtime has here. So whenever they make the updates to Databricks itself, they have a new runtime. And with that, they'll uh, update Apache Spark and Scala, and they'll, they'll update Python in it as well, too. And speaking of Python, you can tell what version to use. And, you know, I kind of wish they would just default to version 3. And I would recommend choosing version 3 because if y'all haven't heard or, or even used Python at all, but uh, it is said to that version two is just going to be fully not supported uh, in a year and a half. So uh, January 1st, 2020, they're going to completely stop supporting version two. So I'll go ahead and definitely start using version three, especially since a lot of the, the big libraries now are going to already starting to stop supporting version two. So the, the worker type and driver type, this is kind of what how much power you want to give Databricks and the amount of memory and then cores and all that. These DBUs is the Databricks units. And this, you know, the more DBUs you use, the more you pretty much pay. And you can specify the number of minimum and maximum workers. And this is where you have that auto scaling here where you can enable it or not. So it'll, you know, when it scales down, it'll go down to, to two workers and it'll go up to a maximum of eight. 
And this is also where the auto termination is here. And I would definitely recommend to check this because you want it to auto uh, terminate after when, it, you know, when you're done with your cluster. But creating a cluster takes a little while too. So you probably noticed I already have one running here. And to load in some data, you go in to the left side here where the data is. You need to tell it uh, what cluster you want to, it needs to be attached to a cluster. So go to update, add data and you can upload your different files. So I'm going to upload, let's see, where is this thing? Uh, this, this bank CSV file. And we'll take a look at this real quick. And it's not a true CSV file because as you can see, it's uh, semicolon delimited, not comma delimited but that's okay. Databricks can definitely handle this as we'll see in a bit. And so this is just kind of some sample bank data on customers and uh, it tells them if they've uh, defaulted on their loans or not. So we have that, we'll just open that, it uploads. There you go, and we'll tell it to create a table with the UI. And this is where we tell it what cluster we want to attach that to. And here's where we can kind of get a preview of the data and give it a couple of extra options before it loads it uh, into our cluster. And uh, as you can tell, I've already had this loaded into my, uh, my cluster here, which is, uh, which is good. It, uh, early on, it didn't tell you if it did until you click create table. So it's good that, that they're updating these things. All right, so it determined it's a CSV, but it also determined that what delimiter that it uses. And I can tell the first row is a header, and I can I can go in manually and change the um, the schema of each of the columns. But something new that they added here is I can tell it to just infer the schema based on the data. So that's a cool thing here. You can get a preview of it, make sure everything looks good and then you just click create table. All right, so now that you have data on it, you've got to do some analysis on it, right? So I have a notebook here, bank analysis, create results. And uh, let's see, I'll show you real quick. You get a few things free in your notebooks when you're, when you're running in uh, Databricks here. Uh, you see in here, I have a Spark session here that I can use. Uh, let's see, I also have a SQL context, if you need to use that, uh, which, is a, which is a hot context. And I think, what is this? And also a Spark context, if you need it. So we're going to use this Spark session to run some SQL, and you would uh, we're doing some straight SQL here, and on our name here, we just give the same name that we would have given it when we uploaded that data in that previous step that we did there. So we loaded our data here, and it's a you know, it's a nice format and all that, but it's not exactly Jupyter when you get if you use pandas, and it's not very uh, it could be more visually appealing, uh, but uh, you can uh, we can print the schema uh, using the, this print schema and all that. And this is the the uh, Spark Data Frame APIs, by the way. We can check our schema. Uh, I changed the schema and the age and the and the balance, uh, but this was before that at first schemas and all that. So everything else is going to be strings. And then I just did kind of a shape of the data. So we have 4,500 rows and 17 columns. So what I mentioned before about having a better, uh, kind of a more visually appealing output here than what we have there, Databricks has this display function that you can use on your uh, data frame. So that's that's much better, isn't it? Get a bit it uses a bit more of the HTML uh, properties here, and uh, this is actually a bit better than what you would get 
from Pandas and uh, Jupyter Notebook because up here I can actually automatically sort on columns. But what I think is even better is you come down here and I can chart instantly. Uh, in Jupyter Notebook, I wouldn't have to write code to do all of this. And I can do different things with this too. So let's see, um, got different, different kinds of charts. Uh, let's do a histogram on, let's see, on the age. So you can, you can do real quick uh, exploratory data analysis by, by looking at charts, just all kind of built into Databricks there. So you're going to save a lot of time from all that coding you would have to do in just a regular Jupyter notebook. And Databricks allows you to run different languages within uh, within a notebook. You see up here, I'm, I'm in a Python notebook. And you, you can create notebooks with uh, Python, R, Scala, and even SQL. And here, uh, if you're not familiar with uh, with notebooks here, this per, uh, percent symbol, and then it kind of a command right after it, that's cons called a magic command, which it just gives you some extra functionality kind of built within the notebooks than you would get through just regular Python or or any other language. In this case, I'm telling it I want to run SQL code right through, throughout the rest of the cell. If I run SQL code, it's going to give me, it's going to automatically wrap that output into that display function for me. So I don't need to do the extra step here in Python and display that data frame. And I can continue to use the uh, data frame APIs, uh, in this case, to do kind of a select on just the age. And, I, you know, I can still use the, this graphing functionality if I want to. But if you're like me and you're a big fan of pandas, the Spark data frame API has this two pandas function, which is really nice. So you can, if, you know, you really use pandas to do your analysis, you can do that right here within Databricks. You don't have to go to a Jupyter Notebook and do it and then try to conform all that, the Pandas APIs back into the uh, Spark data frame APIs. And speaking, you can also, you don't have to, if you'd rather use like Matplotlib or in this case, Seaborn uh, to do your, your plotting, you can do that too and still use this display function within Databricks. You can do a couple of uh, more advanced uh, querying and, and analysis with the, the data frame APIs. Um, here, I'm just uh, checking if there are any uh, uh, missing uh, values and there are none, which is great. I can do some more, uh, some, some more advanced um, analysis. Here I can use the, the group by on the job column and it's wrapped in that display function so I can still do my sorting. So I can see uh, the management here has the, the most, uh, as the, the main job of most of our customers within that, that CSV file. And I can filter on uh, on our data frame. Uh, in this case, I'm doing checking the balance, uh, bring back all the ones that are less than or equal to zero, and I sort on the age. And then I can uh, check this, and I can see uh, can I sort by age and do some extra analysis on that. So that's kind of a, a brief overview of a bit of the a, of the UI of Databricks, how to start a cluster, bring in some data, and start doing some analysis on it. For watching this section of the webinar. Again, if you want to see the entire webinar, the link is down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button. There will be more data and AI videos to come, especially in the Microsoft space. Oh, and you're always welcome to ask any questions about any of the videos I post or if you want to see a future video on anything. 
Thanks again for watching.